Tonight, the mother of murdered Ohio State student Reagan Tokes says lawmakers actions are long overdue after a House vote yesterday. House Bill 166 now moves to the Senate. It would drastically change how ex prisoners are monitored and housed once released. But as 10 investigates uncovered the state's inability to closely watch these offenders on parole laid a path to Reagan's death and the deaths of other women. Lisa Tokes spoke exclusively with chief investigative reporter Bennett Haberly. Reagan Toke's murder was a test of perception versus reality. The perception that if a convicted sex offender like Brian Goldsby were released from prison homeless and assigned a GPS ankle monitor, that someone, somewhere, would monitor his activities, would know if he were committing a string of robberies. The perception that the state's parole authority would follow its own policies and put safeguards in place that would alert someone if someone like Goldsby did something wrong. The reality, that didn't happen. There are a lot of systemic failures that have to happen in order for this crime to occur. Representative Kristen Boggs reminded lawmakers of that Wednesday before the House voted unanimously to approve House Bill 166, known as the Reagan Tokes Act. While a portion of the bill dealing with criminal sentencing already became law, this bill would beef up how ex-prisoners are monitored while reducing the burden of heavy caseloads on parole officers. It would also require that if someone like Goldsby was assigned a GPS ankle monitor, that there are boundaries in place, detailing where they can go and not go, a landscape that wasn't a reality when Goldsby kidnapped, raped, and later shot Reagan five years ago. It's so hard. I wish I was never put in the position to have to fight for something like this, but sitting back and doing nothing was not an option making a difference in this world to help other people from a tragedy still is the best course of action. We spoke to Reagan's mother, Lisa McCrary Tokes, from her Florida home hours after the House voted to advance the bill. She told me it's been frustrating watching the bill fail in past sessions, but she has renewed purpose. It doesn't erase and it doesn't take away our pain and it doesn't take away anything that we've lost, but it does help others and that is something that Reagan was so much about so that is where I say I think she really would be proud and happy that we have continued to see this through and, and stick with it. Reagan's death was not a one-off but as we learned it was part of a systemic pattern of women who had been killed by men under the watch of the state's adult parole authority. What's more, in Reagan's case, the failure to place guardrails on Goldsby's GPS appears to have violated the APA's own policy from 2016, the same year Goldsby was released, which states that the APA shall submit curfews and inclusion or exclusion zones within the first week of a release. You know, you really help uncover some of the brokenness and flaws that got our attention from the get-go to make us want to take action and not sit back and say, okay, this is okay, and I guess we just have to accept it. So thank you for your role and all that. Lisa says she's hopeful that the bill created out of something tragic will advance and spark positive change. Continuing to shine light on the flaws and pushing for that. Unfortunately, that it, it's been our torch to carry, but if it makes a difference and saves lives, we'll continue to carry that torch. Bennett Haberly. 10 investigates. Now, the union representing parole officers say they support the efforts, but argue the bill doesn't go far enough. They'd like to see more officers hired and real-time GPS added to the bill.